little times you're going through now and the little decisions you think don't matter, it definitely matters. So always be cautious of that. Sharif Omar Cooper, born June 11th, 2001. I still remember those slam days not so long ago with all the high school prodigies of the late 2010s being featured and all seemed to have so much potential, at least a shot at achieving their NBA dream. Since then, I've been tuned into Sharif Cooper and to be honest, I didn't see NBA in his game at the time. Not that he was overrated, but had a few major issues you could tell would be a problem once it was time to enter the big leagues. But then he finally got to play at Auburn and I could see what many were seeing, that this guy definitely could have a career in the NBA the way he dominated the competition for the 12 games he did play in college. Yes, you heard that correctly, just 12 games under his belt in the NCAA. 12 exciting games where he put up 20 points per, over 8 assists and 4 rebounds. What was more impressive was how he got to the paint at will with his quick moving feet, shifty ball handling and ability to change direction. He was crafty and hungry still but fighting a battle to even get on the court after the NCAA began investigating his eligibility which cost him his first 12 games of his one year at Auburn. But Sharif didn't disappoint. He opened his career with 26 points and 9 assists, following that up with an even better 28 points, 12 assists and 5 rebounds. I was honestly shocked to see what I thought was too slow-footed in high school and too low-motored, always looking sleepy on the court, was now fast and unstoppable off the dribble. He had also developed a chip on his shoulder I believe he needed instead of the laid-back persona he carried in high school that although made him a 5-star recruit, was still just high school. He'd leave Auburn earlier than anyone expected after a small sample in college and be drafted in the second round of the 2021 NBA Draft by the Atlanta Hawks. Since then, he's played 13 games in the NBA in two years and scored a total of 7 points. Sharif's story in a lot of ways is a good example of the pitfalls of circumstances as well as timing not being in the player's favor. He's most recently been waived by the Cleveland Cavaliers after an unnoteworthy 2023 summer league where he averaged 4 points, 4 assists, 3 turnovers and shot 18% from the field and 18% from 3. His options as of now will be to return to the G League in hopes he develops what scouts feel he's missing or to embark on an overseas journey, one that means being outside the NBA umbrella in hopes an NBA team maybe takes notice. It ain't always making it to the league as soon as possible, but being ready to stay there. Sharif Cooper learned the hard way. Will he ever get back? We'll see. What happened? Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Sharif Cooper is a quote six foot point guard from Newark, New Jersey, but moved to Atlanta at six years old. He has two sisters, one of which played in the WNBA, and a twin brother that plays basketball as well. Throughout high school, Sharif excelled immediately. As a freshman, he led his team to an almost undefeated record and by sophomore year was dropping 40 on top recruits. He really hit the radar as a junior, averaging 27 points over 8 assists, 5 rebounds and 4 steals a game, winning the school's first state title. He was Georgia's Mr. Basketball and Gatorade Player of the Year for his state. He would go on to have a McDonald's All-American senior year where not long after he left school, his jersey was retired as the most successful player in school history. Sharif chose Auburn for college ball but held out by the NCAA to investigate if Cooper received the legal benefits tied to his sports agent father. He sat out 12 games but the next 12 were his most exciting. Stunt number 1. Leaving School Too Soon this growth stunt has to be the most recurring when it comes to the NBA journey. On one side, I understand the mindset of leaving early because who knows what tomorrow holds and if there's a small window of opportunity, we as people are taught to answer the door when it knocks. It takes a strong person to see your friends get to where you all talked about for years 
only for you to still be at a level you feel you're better than. Add to that, making no money, as the NCAA was right up to Sharif leaving school before summer 2021. A month later, NIL deals were approved and kids could accept benefits. A flawed system from the beginning made by greedy individuals, made by greedy individuals that never have to answer for their actions. In my opinion, Sharif absolutely should have stayed in school at least another year before jumping to the NBA. What you have to understand clearly, and you don't have to play in the NBA to know this, but in any walk of life, it's not about getting the job. It's about being valued enough at said job that you end up sticking around long term or leave on your own dime. Getting to the NBA seems cool, but if there's a chance you go in the dreaded second round, why not stay another year and dominate the competition even more? In Sharif's case specifically, barely six foot or under point guards enter the league every year. It's the most unneeded position in the history of the game. To be that, shoot 27% from three, only play 12 games and leave school with a losing record with only a second round guarantee spells a waste of time. Cooper simply wasn't experienced enough to give himself the best shot at staying in the league. Drafted, yes, but that's largely due to the YouTube and social media cloud a prospect can get nowadays, but ready to compete for a job? I don't think so. No one wants to be taken second round because there's no surety in that. A team can release you at any time or send you to the G League half the season on two-way deals till you realize it would have been much easier to play another year in school. He would have dominated next to Jabari Smith Jr. and the roster Auburn had come in after he left, meaning a sure first round pick the following year. But he chose immediate gratification and it led to a rocky journey thus far. Stunt number two, he can shoot. The biggest problem Sharif faced outside his height was his three-point shot. He's always had a flat-footed, awkward hitch in his jump shot that improved in form over the years but not in result. Every year he's been where they release stats to the public, he's been a poor shooter. In this day and age, that's just not going to work. He attempted five threes a game and made just one, good for 22% in college. To me, if I'm a GM in today's NBA, I'm not even considering a guy under six foot, limited experience and shooting 22% from three in the era of the deep ball. No way. The 20 points and eight assists are cool, but the liability on both ends of the floor would be too glaring to sink an investment into. According to the G League, he couldn't shoot either, hosting over four a game in two seasons, making little over one a game, good for 31% year one, and an improved 36% year two. When he was called up and played in the league, he shot six threes and made one of them, good for 16%. Shooting can be improved over time and dedicated training, but combine that with lack of size and other options each year makes it hard for a team to commit. He was drafted in the second round 48th overall by the Atlanta Hawks and signed to a two-way contract but waived after year one and signed with the Cavaliers. Before they waived him and re-signed him in September 2023, only to waive him a month later, which is where we are now. Stun number three, the wrong situations. Sharif Cooper, with all the liability he brings, may have still benefited from being in a circumstance where there was opportunity at least. It's one thing you need as a second round pick. It's almost better going undrafted, then you can choose any circumstance you want. But Atlanta taking him when they already had an undersized point guard, who's also their star player and all-star, means there was always a ceiling on what Sharif could offer there. This means most of his time in the G League or on Atlanta's bench when he could have used that year staying in school and for sure being a first round pick the year following with Jabari Smith Jr. being a top three pick. His point guard would have definitely joined him in the first round. After Atlanta, I'm not sure why he decided to sign to another bad situation in Cleveland where they have an all-star backcourt of two guys six foot and under. Like expected, he spent most his time in the G League. He's yet to play a game for the Cavaliers in the NBA. 
at the end of the 2023 training camp, still with 19 guys, the Cavs waived 7 players in total and Sharif was one of them. Making that roster was always going to be a long shot because of the position he plays and his lack of size and shooting ability. All in all, Sharif Cooper, in my opinion, moved too fast and should have stayed in school. It led down an uncertain road and by the looks of it will lead to the G League or overseas for him for the foreseeable future. He, ha he has game, but the NBA isn't valuing him like they would have had he been a first round pick and could show his talents. But he declined the long route and for these reasons, his growth is being stunted. Salute, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunted Growth and I'm out.